Welcome to you, my dear viewers. It is a privilege for me to come to you again with this amazing message on our new series, The Establishment of the Kingdom of God on Earth. We have been looking at Revelation 21, which is towards the end of the Bible. Like, everything is almost coming to an end. And I want to open your eyes to begin to think about this thing and to these things and to anticipate what a glorious future awaits the people of God. Like First Corinthians 2 say, I has not seen, no ear heard, no has it even entered the mind of man what God has prepared for those who love him. But however, verse 10 says that he has revealed these things to us by his spirit. So the key thing here is all about the spirit. Because if you're not in the spirit, you cannot understand these things now and you cannot perceive what is coming. So in Revelation 21, he starts by saying that God is going to create a new heaven and a new earth. What exactly is that? In one word, it's a change of administration, a change of government, a change of the leadership of the world. It will be in the hands of Jesus and all who truly follow him. Indeed, it will be a new world, a world of justice, a world of equity, a world of humility, a world of truth, and a world of happiness. In a nutshell, that's, that's what it means. So it says that the heavenly city, the new Jerusalem, descends to earth. God comes up, he sits with his people. And then we went ahead how Jesus gave the promise in verse 7 of Revelation 21 that for those who overcome, for those who believe, they will inherit all this. And in verse 8, we were told, um, if you live this kind of a lifestyle, you cannot enter the city because it's a city of righteousness. It's not a city of immorality. It's not a city of stealing. It's not a city of lying. It's not a city of idolatry. It's not a city of just self-pleasure. For if you live in these things, you will be excluded from this city. And then we turn to verse 9. And, and what we're going to be doing here is just looking at this new Jerusalem and, and trying to contemplate what exactly did John see. And as we contemplate, this, there's something here that I want to mention up front before we actually read this section of scripture. And I want you, if you have your Bible, to turn with me to Lamentations 2. And before we read that, this is how I'm going to preface what I'm going to say. We have already seen a video, I posted a video here on what is heaven? Heaven is the unseen realm of God. It is the spiritual realm in which God exists. And God exists everywhere or oh, it is the perception of reality from God's perspective that's what heaven is it's a place but it's a realm of existence and it is very critical to understand these things otherwise you may not understand what even the entire book of Revelation is about and, 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 and in view of that I want to say this also that the book of Revelation is John's spiritual perspective of what is going on 100% on this earth. I'll say that again. The book of Revelation is God's spiritual perspective shown to John, is heavenly perspective shown to John of things that are happening 100% here on earth and unless your eyes are opened you cannot understand that that's why in revelation chapter 4 john says i was in the spirit and here in revelation 21 beginning from verse 9 he said at once i was in the spirit what exactly does that mean I was in the spirit and if you are not in the spirit you cannot understand but pastor how can I be in the spirit it's simple 
You must have clearly turned away from your wickedness. It is called repentance. You must have completely surrendered your life to Jesus and believing in him that he died for you, that he is your savior. When you make this decision, the Holy Spirit transforms you. In a process we call, you are being born again. You are born from above. You are born from heaven. You now have become a heavenly creature. You have become a spiritual being in the realm of God. And like Jesus, you no longer belong to this world. Like Jesus, you are like you are from heaven. Even though you are still physically present here. Now, these are the realities that you must have in your head to be able to actually perceive this divine phenomenon. I want to call your attention to Lamentations 2, 1 and 2. To, to illustrate what I'm trying to say, an actual event happened on earth in 586 BC, the city of Jerusalem was burnt down by the Babylonians. And then God gave a spiritual picture of what had actually happened for Jeremiah to write down. And this is what he wrote. So we are talking about a physical occurrence that is being described in spiritual terms or in heavenly terms. How did he describe it? Lamentations 2, 1 to 2. How the Lord has covered the daughter of Zion with the cloud of his anger. He has hurled down the splendor of Israel from heaven to earth. Wait a minute. Israel was on earth. How come her splendor is hurled from heaven to earth? Pay attention to that. Verse 2, without pity, the Lord has swallowed up all the dwellings of Jacob. In his wrath, he has torn down the strongholds of the daughter of Judah. He has brought her kingdom and its princes down to the ground in dishonor. So, <laughs> when you are reduced from a point of high honor to a point of dishonor, Spiritually speaking, God has brought you down from heaven to earth. Let me take it home a little bit this way. When America falls, this is how it, would it is described in spiritual terms and it depicts the fall of Satan. Jesus said, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. What exactly is being said here? Just that the greatest has become the least. That is reduced from honor to dishonor. That is falling from heaven to earth. I hope that that kind of happens on your mind to be able to understand this thing. So Revelation 21, beginning from verse 9, we read this. One of the seven angels had, who had the seven bulls full of the seven last place came and said to me, Come, I will show you the bride, the wife of the Lamb. Verse 10, And then he carried me away in the spirit to a mountain great and high and showed me the holy city, Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God. Now, I can go ahead and read all of that all the way down to 21. But here are the few things that I'm going to say here. I could say it in one minute. I could say it in one hour. It all depends whether or not you are in the spirit. And you can be in the spirit if you want to be in the spirit. So, so the new Jerusalem is described as a mountain great and high. In Isaiah 2. Isaiah says, in the last day, the mountain of the Lord will be exalted above all the mountains. And in Isaiah 40, 
we see from there a correlation that mountains represent nations. Mountains represent nations, which means that at the end of time now, God's nation will be the greatest above all nations. It has nothing to do with a physical mountain. It has something to do with nations and their greatness. So the city is described as it has 12 gates with 12 angels at the gates with the names of the 12 tribes of Israel. Pay attention to that, the 12 tribes of Israel. And then it has 12 foundations. The wall of the city has 12 foundations and those 12 foundations have the names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. So there have only been 12 apostles, no more apostles. So we see 24 elders here, the 12 tribes of Israel, the names of the 12 tribes of Israel, and then the names of the 12 apostles of the Christ, showing you that the future is a kingdom of Israel. And the foundations are Christ and the apostles who are Israelites as well. And it does say here, it gives something about the measurement of the city in verse 16. And it is estimated that these measurements are about 2,200 kilometers. So it is 2,200 kilometers wide and 2,200 kilometers, uh, it's a square. And when you multiply the length and the width, like you find the area of a square, not a cube, or it's, it's represented as a cube, but you know a city cannot be a cube, but we can talk about the surface area, which will be 2,200 times 2,200, and it's about 4,840,000 square kilometers. Let me just give you a fun fact here. The United States uh, surface area is 9,529, it's 9,529,063 uh, square kilometers. And if you do the mathematics here, the ratio is 1 is to 2. The New Jerusalem is like half the size of the United States of America. And you can actually put it this way, the New Jerusalem is almost like the habitable and cultivatable part of the United States of America. Just making you to have a clue. So obviously, this new Jerusalem is so big, it cannot fit in the Middle East. So of course, it's the new Jerusalem, not the old Jerusalem, and it does not land on the old Jerusalem. I'm saying a lot here without saying anything, but if you're in the spirit, you will understand. It says that there are foundation stones that decorate the world. There's 12 of them. And um, to be noted is that this same 12 foundation uh, uh, precious stones are the same stones that are on the effort of the high priest of Israel. So everything we see here is like this is an Israelite kingdom. And who is Israel anyway? We've mentioned that in the past, and I'm not going to go into that now. So in verse 21, it says that the great street in the city was of pure gold. I was just noting, oh, it said great street, not the streets of the city. It just said the great street of the city, which means that the main avenue where the king will reside is of pure gold. And it's figurative here, but could as well be literal. And I want to say this, that everything that is figurative in the Bible represents a physical reality. Now I want to ask you this question. So where would this city possibly land on earth? For sure not in Israel, as I've mentioned, because the land is very small. And then this question for you to imagine what could John or how could John have described America if he was given 
in the vision. Pay attention to the fact that we have developed so greatly. We look so beautiful now in comparison to the rural setting in which John was at that time. So, have you got anything about the New Jerusalem? Where it may be located or will be located? It's all in the mix. I've said much what I say, much what I say. And I want to conclude by saying this again. Helen is the unseen realm of God. And everything in the book of Revelation is heaven's perspective of what is happening on earth. Peace and blessings to you.